Welcome to the Anagama Kiln here on the campus of the University of Montevallo. I'm Tamika McCoy. And I'm Megan Collins. Today we'll watch as Dr. Meyer and his crew show us some fire tricks. We'll also take a look back at what has happened during the firing so far and we'll show a spe some special pieces from inside the kiln. We're here with Dr. Meyer. Dr. Meyer, tell us what we can expect to see today. Well, today uh, we've been at temperature for about two days, uh, which is great, and that allows us to do some things that we haven't had a chance to do yet. Uh, we're going to put charcoal and some pieces in the firebox, and I'll show you what effects that is. I have a piece that we did last time that way, so I'll show you what we're trying to achieve. We're going to do that. We're going to push some pieces off of shelves into the coal bed to create special effects that we, uh, that we like. We're going to pull some rings out of the kiln, see how the melt is, and uh, I don't know, whatever all else we can uh, we can do in the time that we have. Okay. Remember, you can email us during the show at any time at kilncast at montevallo.edu. We have our first piece of viewer mail today. Sarah Wiggins from here in Montevallo would like to know how much wood it takes to fire the kiln and how often you have to add the, the pieces to the fire. Well, the, the, the wise guy uh, response would be too much wood. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you probably, if you were with us in the beginning, you saw how much wood was stacked around, and uh, we've probably been through about 11 cords. One cord is four feet by four feet by eight feet. We've been through 11 of those up to this point, probably, just to estimate. Uh, we'll probably put another three in today with all the stuff we're doing. So uh, typically, anywhere is around between 12 and 14 cords of wood go in the kiln. All right, well, we're going to take a closer look at Fat Bastard, and here's Bruce Finkley. Thanks, y'all. I'm up here at the top of uh, of Pat Bastard with Chris Greenman. Chris, um, it is really, really hot up here. Um, can you describe a little bit about um, what the viewers can see from this angle? Um, um, in the background, you might be catching a little bit of the exit flue through here, and you're catching the side ports, and they just did a side port loading. So you're seeing a lot of flame and smoke coming from the side ports. Um, and in about 10 minutes, they'll be ready to go again with the side ports. So they they regularly do that about every 10, 10 minutes right, or so? Right, right, right. And uh, about how much wood do they put in each time they, they reload like um, that? We're putting about five of these in each port. Um, we're doing three at a time, so three at the top and then three up down near the firebox. And, and uh, about how hot do you think it is in there right now? I'm thinking the firebox is probably around 23, 2400, and probably back here it's a little bit cooler, although we're probably starting to even it out a little bit more. Okay, well Chris, thank you so much. Now let's head, let's head back down to the bottom of the bastard with Megan and Tamika. Here's the front of the firebox where the main stoke hole is. Now that we've talked about how much wood it takes to keep the kiln going, let's take a look at how the firing has been going this week and see some of the wood that has been placed inside of the kiln. at 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we've moved through kind of the danger zone of the, the pots cracking or the pots bloating and from here forward from 1600 up to as the cones bending um, it's just a balance now of, of fuel and fire. Have there been any problems or anything? Anything uh, unusual? No problems uh, to date. Um, it's actually it's gone really smoothly so far. It's been very nice. Side stoke, side stoke. Four. Five. 
Big. Oh, six. Another big. Seven. Another big. Eight, one more. Nine. Okay. You're, you're, Tracy, you're good. You're way good. That's good. Wait, I've got a the door and this brick is starting to move. Yeah, the door. Just, yeah, let's let it, let it die down a little. Nope. Now, that's a shot. Oh, my goodness. The one on the other side, on the right side is really... Can y'all see inside there with your camera? Uh-uh. But I'm going to say, I don't think I can either. It's too bright. At dark, it, when it's dark, you can, but I don't know. It's the daylight. I got a really right high, the high shutter speed, so I know it's not that. I can see him. Well, uh, we have vented a temperature uh, that we wanted in the firebox, and uh, then we're hitting a little bit of a snag. You know, sometimes it... Uh, it uh, chokes, and so it's been choking a little bit. We lost a little temperature, so now we're building it back up. This is the air hole intake for the firebox. So what I'd like to see is a little bit more brilliance among those coals. It's supposed to look like uh, diamonds. You can see it a little bit right there. I mean, that's starting to look better. But when it really is a healthy coal bed, it looks like little sparkling diamonds. And uh, that indicates to me the right mix of fuel and oxygen. And if you get too much unburned fuel coming down, sneaking in there, it blocks the airflow and it inhibits the uh, temperature rise. We've been down in the firebox like three or four hours ago, and we've tried to maintain the temperature, get the temperature back up in the firebox to um, 23, and so we're there. I mean, it's we're, we're where we want it, um, and we're pretty hot in the back. We're 2050 in the middle of the kiln, and um, 1850, 1900 in the back, and yeah, lots of drippy ash in the front on pieces. So we're looking good. Any problems so, or anything? Just we, you know, we seem to find that um, just through different people stoking or the wood we're using, or I think mainly probably um, stoking in the side ports, we're bringing the the temperature down in the front. So then we got to stoke in the front again and leave the side ports alone. But right now we've got nice even. Nice good heat in the in the middle and the back, so we're in good shape. Right now we're we're side stoking a bit just to keep it at temperature in the back and we're trying to do that and we're trying to keep it stable. And we're not trying to get too hot in the front. And we're using mostly pine and a couple of pieces of hardwood. Um, right now, it's about 1900 in the back and 2350 in the front. And we're trying to keep it that way so the pots don't melt off the shelves. Got here about 5, well, 445. We're pretty sleepy, but it's fun. We're glad to be here. <laughs> Anything else? But I'm the Kilton Bandit. This time of day, 
this is required uh, gear because um, it's so hot that you'll burn your face off. And the oxygen is too hot to breathe, so you have to filter it a little bit. And um, so this is the uniform. This is how we do our face when we uh, stoke the kiln. This is the uh, Kiln Diva reporting live. It's 6 a.m. Yep, 6 a.m. And we've been here for about an hour and a half. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice outside, but it's, it's, the kiln's hot. It's real hot. Um, anyway, just wanted to let you know. Uh, anything else? <laughs> know how smart she is? I admire her. She's an artist making a living off of her art and she just graduated. And I'm just so excited for that because it gives me hope for the future. My future. Your sweet Teresa. So much better with this thing on. Oh my gosh. A figure. You don't even know. Oh, oh, oh. No, my bad. shift 18 and the kiln bandit and the kiln diva that's right mother Teresa trucker <laughs> and goodbye we'll see you next time bye bye, bye. Uh, what we're doing is letting this um, um, firebox burn down so we can take an optical reading we have an optical pyrometer that will uh, you know calibrates it equates uh, heat with uh, lightness in the kiln so uh, we're gonna do that and um, then I'm gonna try to get as many ashes on as many pieces as we can by taking a long uh, thin shovel and uh, just flicking ashes everywhere so uh, then we're gonna stoke again so right now we're doing uh, side stoking and uh, firebox stoking to try to modulate the heat and to build a coal bed in the back of the kiln and um, it's tricky because sometimes the temperature goes down when you do that. Um, you'd think it would it would go up, and that's not always the case. So uh, it looks good right now. It looks like we're uh, achieving what we wanted to do. So. Well, how have things been going? Any problems or anything over the firing? Um, almost problem free. Um, we had a little glitch sometimes when you're going up. Um, it it sort of hiccups a little bit, and so we were, we were up at temperature in the firebox. We were at 23, and next thing you know, we were at 1850, <laughs> which is a kind of a severe drop. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, nothing broke as a result or whatever. But we had to drive it back up. Sometimes it chokes. It needs oxygen, so the little holes that you see there, the primary air holes, sometimes get clogged up, and it'll drop fairly rapidly. Now we want you to notice how the wood is getting smaller and smaller as the kiln progresses. Now be sure to tune in for our final show next Saturday at 12 noon. We will watch as the artists pull their pieces from the kiln. And don't forget to email us any of your questions at kilncast at montevallo.edu and we'll read them live on the air. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you. 